type of waves in which the particle in the medium vibrates along the direction of motion or along propagation direction. Let's again assume that the wave is moving along positive x direction and the particles in the medium are also vibrating along the x direction, positive x and negative x. And the best example for this is the sound wave. So what happens in sound waves is when I produce disturbance, there is compression and rarefaction of the medium. That means the density of the medium changes continuously from point to point. The change in density is responsible for this longitudinal waves. Or you can also say the pressure changes along the direction of motion. And the sound waves are not just unidirectional, they are moving in three dimensions. So that is the reason why you can hear sound from all the directions. I need not to face towards the mic. I might be speaking to any direction, still the microphone can detect my sound. That means the sound wave is a three-dimensional wave. So how these longitudinal waves are characterized? There are compressions and rarefactions. What does it mean? Compression means there are high density regions and rarefactions are low density regions. So this actually happens in a micro level. We can't actually make out the compressions and rarefactions with the naked eyes, but it is happening in a small scale. Now, see the transverse wave can't travel in a gas, whereas longitudinal waves can travel in any media, solid, liquid, or gas. Because what happens in this longitudinal wave is just a compression and rarefaction. In gases also it is possible to compress. Liquid oil, yes, obviously it is possible to compress. So how about solids? The solid also you can. The best example is when you hammer a nail, we are hitting or giving a shock along the length of the nail. So what happens? There is compression and expansion in the direction of length of the nail. And we can feel that vibration. The longitudinal wave generated from it can be heard. So the longitudinal wave can exist in any of the medium that is solid, liquid and gas whereas transverse is possible only on solids and on the liquid surfaces along with the solids on the surfaces. And since this longitudinal wave is particularly moving along the direction of motion and all the particles in that medium are moving along this same direction, they cannot be further polarized because they are already polarized. As I have said before, the transverse wave in unidirectional motion are already polarized. They can't be further polarized. So is longitudinal waves. They are already polarized, so they can't be polarized. So this is purely based on the particle vibration. Now, let me look at how we can classify waves. So based on energy propagation, it can be classified into two. One is progressive, another one is stationary wave. So progressive wave means a wave which can transport energy from one point in the space to another point in the space without actual movement of the medium. The movement will not move, but what moves is the energy from one to another point. And it will continue to move, as this name says, the progressive nature. It will never return back or it will never stop. It can die out slowly. So generally, we can again further classify progressive waves based on their nature. See, the transverse waves are progressive in a rope example. They continue to move along the length of the rope as long as you have an end to the rope, a finite end. And uh, that is example for one dimensional progressive wave. In two dimensions, again, ripples are progressive waves. They continue moving on the surface of the liquid. It can be a pond, 
the sound from a point source is a three dimensional progressive wave the amplitude goes on reduces but actually the sound will continue to theoretically it should not stop at a point it will continue to move in space and it will die out so it's a three dimensional progressive wave so all particles in a progressive wave are having same amplitude the amplitude of all the particles will be equal it may not be equal at a given time but over the course of time they gain the same amplitude so they will be having a phase difference it means all the particles are not vibrating in phase they are out of phase whereas for stationary waves so stationary means there is no propagation of energy energy will not be transferred from one point to another point but what happens here is there is motion of the particle the medium will vibrate but there is no propagation of the wave or energy there are actually waves present so this is obtained by the superposition of two identical progressive waves so when you have two progressive waves moving in opposite directions with the same amplitude and frequency their amplitude must be equal and frequency should also be similar the only difference is they shall move in opposite direction if they superimpose they produce stationary waves so stationary waves is the result of superimposition of two progressive waves in opposite direction what happens here is actually as a result of superposition you will find few points having zero amplitude there is zero amplitude and we call such points as nodes and there are points with maximum amplitude those are called as anti nodes that means in a stationary waves the amplitudes are unequal they change from point to point so amplitude is actually a function of position in stationary waves and the amplitudes will change from node to anti node node it will be zero and anti node amplitude goes on increases and exactly at the anti node point it will be maximum and again it will start decaying down it reduces so that means here in the stationary wave only few points are in motion and the rest of the points are not moving but one important feature in this case is all of them are in phase if one point is raising upward the very next point is also moving upward that means particles are in phase here whereas in progressive wave not all the particles are in phase only those which are having a path difference of lambda are in phase but in this all of them are having same phase so that is the reason why everything goes up and everything goes up in a stationary wave so this is about the progressive and stationary waves based on energy propagation the next one is based on the medium for the propagation so based on the medium involved in the propagation we can classify them into mechanical and non mechanical waves so mechanical waves means they require a material medium for the propagation of those waves that means without medium these waves can't be propagated whereas we have non mechanical waves as well and they require no medium so the example is for non mechanical waves it is electromagnetic waves the sunlight that we receive from the star sun there is no intervening medium between sun and the earth so they can be transported from one point to another similarly is the electromagnetic spectrum any part of the spectrum is independent of medium for its propagation whereas mechanical waves they need medium for the propagation the best example for mechanical waves is sound wave you might have 
done this experiment in your high school grades where a bell inside a jar is present and when you shake that you can hear that once you evacuate the air inside you can't hear the ring of that bell that is because there is no medium inside the jar so a medium is required for a mechanical wave so ripples on water is possible only because of the water if there is no water you can't find any ripples so in string also the transverse waves are present but if there is no string you can't even imagine there is a wave in that string so in solids mechanical waves exist and they can be in transverse form now in gases and liquids these are in longitudinal nature the waves which are mechanical waves in particular they need material medium so in gases and liquids there can be only longitudinal waves because these can't withstand the shearing force only solids can and in solids it depends upon mode of excitation with what mode you are exciting see in the example of a nail let us say you have a nail or a rod and you are hammering in this particular direction then the wave setup is longitudinal let us say the excitation is or you are exciting this rod by applying a force in some direction so in this case the wave setup is transverse wave it will be transverse or longitudinal in solids based upon the direction of excitation it is excited along the length here it is at some angle with its length then the transverse wave will be set up in a solid and remember this fact that v l is always greater than velocity of transverse wave in solids that is velocity of longitudinal wave in a solid is greater than velocity of transverse wave this is true in solids so this is about the classification of waves and the next one is the types is pulsative wave or a wave train so what is wave pulse a pulse is a very short wave and produced due to excitation for a very small interval of time the time interval is very small and the produced disturbance looks like this very part of wave and that is called as wave pulse and wave pulse moves along the length of the say string or a rope and before arrival of this wave form or wave pulse the particles are exactly at rest as it comes the gain the velocity and because of that acceleration they move and they again come back to rest once this pulse passes through them so only one pulse but in the case of wave train it is combination of many pulses for a long period of time there are more pulses produced how can you produce such type of pulse by shaking a rope up and down continuously you are able to produce this type of pattern it's a series of pulses 